Armenia is several hours away by plane, and touching down you experience a very different world. Its capital city, Yerevan, is an eclectic mix of modern architecture and Soviet buildings, a city where rich and poor coexist. The country is desperate to shake off its Soviet past, and Armenians hope the country's recent tech boom will put them on the world map. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done. It's in this developing landscape that an innovative new pilot is being launched. Our project's called CAST. It's a village connectivity system which creates a Wi-Fi network that can work offline and on. It delivers free resources, news and information and a way for people in villages to tell stories. Armenia is a really intriguing country. It's largely undiscovered by Western tourists. We certainly didn't know what to expect before we arrived. It's a very small country. There's three million inhabitants. It's got Georgia to the north, Azerbaijan to the east and Turkey to the west. Here in the center of the capital of Yerevan, there's a really vibrant coffee culture and technology scene, which we're here to learn more about. Armenia's IT sector is developing rapidly. With a yearly growth rate of nearly 25%, it's the fastest growing economy in the country. IT firms in Armenia account for nearly 4% of the nation's GDP and generate around $380 million a year. Impact Hub Yerevan is one of the CAST project partners and they've witnessed firsthand this rapid growth. The reason that uh, technology and the IT sector is um, f focused on or developed in Armenia um, mostly has to do with geopolitics as well as our sort of um, Soviet past that really invested in science, math, and technology. So on the geopolitics side, of course, we have at the moment we have two closed borders, and uh, but we have an unbelievable intellectual potential. So the idea of focusing on the IT sector is is basically about the idea that you don't need to cross borders to uh, sort of um, for brain power. So that's on the one hand. On the other hand, we have a very long history in math, science, and so building upon that already, you know, uh, existing potential uh, is a good idea and a very good investment. Despite the vast sums of money being generated and invested in Armenia's digital future, there's still a stark contrast between how technology is used and is available in the capital compared to how it is in rural areas. In some ways, Yerevan is quite a connected city. We have most restaurants, cafes and uh, even public spaces have uh, Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi enabled. On the other hand, uh, oftentimes in the regions, even though people may have the latest, greatest phones, um, people don't usually uh, enable 3G. So they, so they have the fancy phones, but they are not connected to the internet. Armenia's tech scene is very new. Change has been slow coming, and Impact Hub think the country's former Soviet status is to blame. About 70 years, Armenia was uh, part of the Soviet Union, and then it's been uh, 25, around 25 years that it's uh, in the, an independent country now. Uh, but there's a lot of things that has stayed from the Soviet time because uh, apparently um, a lot of things were given to people for free. So for long years, the, the, there's this mentality of people expecting things to be given to them without them taking the initiative. So now there is a, there is a new um, breath in the country, there's a new change happening, and um, what we are hoping to see is more and more people starting to take initiative themselves and becoming to take projects themselves and not waiting for someone to come from abroad and do something here. It's not just hardware and software being developed in Armenia. The way in which technology is used is also changing, and one industry that's benefiting more than most is journalism. Civilnet and HETC are investigative online news operations that provide content forecast. They explain that censorship is still a problem in Armenia. There's limited press freedom. 
legacy players on television, radio and newspaper can face barriers when they report the news. More and more independent news outlets are springing up to tell the news as it is. And it's this access to uncensored news that many Armenians want. And the team behind CAST hope to provide access alongside entertainment and educational resources in the villages. CAST is a collaboration between three partners, UCLAN's Media Innovation Studio, Impact Hub Yerevan and WeCaster. And the team are really hopeful about what CAST can deliver. We are going to be uh, piloting this in three villages, in three different parts of Armenia. So far, the three villages have been extremely receptive and are um, interested themselves where, you know, to what extent this can help them um, uh, pass along information uh, to the residents of that village. The project will be piloted in three villages. Kamaris in central Armenia, Lernapat in the north, and Le Shazan, which sits next to Lake Seven in the east. The villages all have varying levels of infrastructure, but the divide between life in the city and life in the regions is stark. Aside from the introduction of digital technology and mobile phones, one would think hardly anything had changed for many, many years. During their visits, the cast team hold various outreach events, meeting local high school students and giving talks at the village halls. The aim is to introduce and explain the technology, but also to find out exactly what the villages want from the network. It's very much hoped that the villagers will take an active role in shaping their own digital future. We're in the second village now, which is Lernapat, and it's taken nearly three hours to get here. And what really strikes us all is how the experience is a little bit surreal. Um, the villages are so remote, but it draws into focus what's so different about being here. Really, the landscape's so rusty, there's very lack of colour, the infrastructure's really poor. So all those things are really stark differences compared to the UK. But then again, there's loads of similarities. You ask the children what they want on the devices and it's the same as if they were in the UK. They want showbiz and music, uh, Wikipedia, sports news. And there's also older people in the community learning how to use the devices. So although there's lots of differences, there's also lots of similarities and it makes you realise that communities really do need digital tools no matter where they are in the world. With device installation nearly complete, it won't be long before CAST will be operational. But how exactly does the technology work and what sorts of things might the villagers be able to do? Today we're in Lenart Park and behind us is one of the bus stops where we'll be uh, installing one of these uh, Ycaster devices and um, as part of a CAST program where we'll be able to provide uh, valuable and important information to the people in the village in order to hopefully uh, enrich and empower their lives. All we need is a, a smart device, so any Wi-Fi enabled device, it could be the latest iPhones to the oldest computers, it doesn't matter, in order to access the content that is stored in here. So when we turn on the Ycaster, it's going to create a network of approximately 50 to 70 uh, meter radius and anyone within that uh, proximity will be able to access the content. And if we want to expand the coverage area, we can think of putting uh, multiple of these devices that will then connect to each other via mesh to expand the coverage area. And at that level, we're sort of mimicking a, a local internet or an intranet that provides valuable information to people based on their location. We spoke to some of the students at the local high school who were very keen to get involved. And they told us a little bit about their own lives and why they're looking forward to having cast. I like my village and I live here with my family. My parents, my uncle and my grandparents all live in the same house. I have an older brother but he is studying at a university. I go to school here in the village. After I finish school I would like to become a lawyer so that I can be useful and do something good for the residents of my village. Life in Lernapet is nice but the internet connectivity here could be improved. It is not very advanced and there is not a lot of technology here but I think people will be happy to participate 
participate in this project. We have Wi-Fi and modems for connecting to the Internet, but a village-wide network could make everything better. I'm a very positive person and I like to be happy. I wake up, go to class and come home again. Every day I try to plan things that will keep me happy. I live with my parents and my brother's family. He has a wife and two children. We have one computer and one tablet between us. I usually use the tablet. I like to browse social media and watch comedy online. Right now they're showing Full House, so I'm watching that. I'm really looking forward to the project and hope I will use it regularly. IT is catching on quickly in the villages, but the older generation are still in two minds. We're very excited to have this technology in our village. I'm a little worried that people may write bad things about each other on the message boards, but otherwise I'm really looking forward to it. The technology will really improve our lives and encourage people in the village to think about a more digital future. After three days on the road, the team have one last day together in Yerevan to reflect on what's been happening. The project's taken nearly a year to get off the ground and there's quite a big team working on it. It's funded by the uh, Higher Education Innovation Fund, which is uh, a small pot of money that comes through the university for projects that have real impact in the community. But it still begs the question of why we're here in Armenia, of all the villages that we could have worked around the world. And really the reason for that is because we had such great li links in place with Wecaster and Impact Hub Yerevan. And when we started to look at the communities that weren't too far away from the city centre, we realised that actually there were some big problems that we could help to find out more and, and perhaps even help to uh, get over. Um, so we're now working in these villages. One of them's an hour away, one of them's two hours away, and one, Kamaris, is just half an hour. Um, so really, these communities not only offered us the test bed that we needed um, in the sense that they had digitally connected devices, mobiles, laptops, but, but in actual fact, the villages are not connected to the internet and they really do lack access to news, information and educational resources. By their very nature, pilot projects are unpredictable, but the team are really hopeful that CAST will play a small role in shaping the digital future of Armenia. It's awesome because it's so experimental and we have no idea where it's going to go. And um, I think that that's what's most exciting about it. If we can get to a place where we are bringing connectivity to villages um, which wouldn't have connectivity otherwise, uh, that's a pretty cool result. Through internet and through all this um, social media, uh, it's, there are more opportunities to see wh how, what people think or how people do different in Europe or in other parts of the world. So, and you see that the, the young, young generation is quite different now, different thinking, more forward thinking, more open-minded, and, um, and we really, really hope to see more positive uh, impact in the country.